Seeing the World Through the Eyes of God Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 through 9 For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You see, the Lord God Almighty is above us. He lives in a realm that a human mind cannot comprehend. And one thing about God we need to understand is that He sees the world in two distinct groups. He doesn't see the world in ten different groups. We as humans tend to cherry-pick groups of people and put one group of people here and then put Baptists over there and then place Pentecostals over here and then place atheists over there and then we place pagans over there and then Roman Catholics over here and so on. But that's not how God sees the world. Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. Two groups were named, the perishing and the saved. Within the spirit world, there is a dividing line, a dividing line that separates those who are perishing and those who are saved. I tend to live my life thinking of this dividing line that God has. There is an invisible line. Take for instance a bus that is full of people. It is a daunting thought to know that there is an invisible line that separates one group of people from another. Take for instance the office you work in. There is an invisible line that goes straight through your office. An invisible line that separates those who are being saved and those who are perishing. Ponder this thought. Anytime you see a large congregation of people, know that God sees these people in two distinct, mutually exclusive categories. Now, what a truly sobering thought is that even in churches, in churches across the world, this line exists. The line that separates the ones who are perishing and the ones who are being saved. This same dividing line even separates husbands and wives, parents and children, and so on. But we as Christians are not viewing the world the same way God does. And this is causing so many conflicts in the body of Christ. As humanity falls further away from the teachings of Christ, it will become less loving. We all know that Jesus taught that God's entire message to humanity hung on two commands of Scripture, to love God with everything and to love one's neighbor as themselves. And in our day and age, we can see the love of many waxing cold, and it is filtering into the church. We are to love one another. Church is not meant to be a hostile place. We as the church need to do better and love one another. There is so much division in the world, and what breaks my heart is the division amongst churches. In the world we live in, you can literally see the love of many waxing cold. Look out your window and you will see this group of people hating that group of people. Look out your window and you will see this country versus that country. Look out your window and you will see this establishment versus this group of people. There is so much friction in our country. Different protests are taking place all across our nation because of different injustices taking place. And the sad thing is, it is only going to get worse as our world and nation departs further and further away from Jesus' teaching of love. This world will continue to be divided. But what is most upsetting is the division between Christians, this denomination versus that denomination. Baptist versus Episcopalian, Evangelist versus Methodist, Presbyterian versus Pentecostal Charismatics, Lutheran versus Angelican versus Seventh-day Adventist. This denomination versus that one. If you may allow me to be blunt, today the denomination that you prescribe to can't save you. Saving faith is not through one denomination or another. Saving faith is through the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe denominations are a good thing because they outline what a person prescribes to. However, 
we should not fight or argue someone because they believe in another denomination than yourself. Essentially, salvation is through one person, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, and not just any Jesus Christ. Your faith must be rooted in the Jesus Christ of this Bible, because if the truth be told, we can debate about doctrines for endless ages, but foundationally, the dividing line for every single person is true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that separates people. He is the gospel message. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. This verse clarifies all we need to know, that eternal life is found only in Christ Jesus, for he is the eternal Son of God Mankind searches many places to discover eternal life outside of Christ, but it is not found in good works, denominational memberships, philosophical teachings, scientific discoveries, religious leanings, educational qualifications, legalistic practices, legalistic rituals, praying ten times a day, or any of man's other attempts to attain perfection and everlasting life outside of God's declared way. Simply stated, he who has the Son has the life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. This may shock and offend some believers, but salvation is not the denomination or the name of the church you attend. No, no, your church can't save you. Salvation is through one man, and that is Jesus Christ. If you are a follower of the Jesus Christ of this Bible, you are my brother and you are my sister, and we are to love one another and not look at areas in scripture where we disagree and use those areas as vehicles for us to hate one another. I am not for one moment attempting to say, be part of this denomination or leave that denomination. All I'm saying is the most important doctrine is the one about the Lord Jesus Christ and for us not to allow the devil to split us up as one body in Christ. Become a mature Christian. There is one body of Jesus Christ and not 34 different bodies of Jesus Christ. We are to love one another, one body in Christ. Do you know when you go to heaven, you will be there with people that did not have the exact same theological beliefs as you. Yes, there are some core doctrines like Christology that we all must agree on, but there are other doctrines which Christians fight one another over, and they are not even salvational issues. Stick together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Defend your brothers and sisters in Christ. The Lord views the Christian denominations and humanity completely different to the way we do. Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The Bible is clear. There is no middle ground. It's either you are worshiping God or you are worshiping the devil. There is no such thing as spiritual neutrality. The Bible clearly sets up a dividing line. Notice how the Bible in Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 did not begin to list different denominations. Two groups were named, the perishing and the saved. Within the spirit world, there is a dividing line, a dividing line that separates those who are perishing and those who are saved. The Bible makes it clear, you and I can know which side of this line we are on. And furthermore, people can even tell which side of the line you are on. In the spirit world, there is a dividing line. Paul the apostle is dividing the world into two. The Bible always divides the world into two. There are no subcategories in the eyes of the Lord. You are either His or not His. You are either saved or perishing. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Broad is the gate that leads to destruction. Make every effort to walk on the narrow road, 
The reason why the road to salvation is so narrow is because there is only one way, and that is Jesus Christ. But there are multiple ways a person can go to Gehenna. We need to know that many have been swept off already and many are still falling away. You must be deliberate about your service to God. You must be deliberate about your choice to follow Jesus. You must be deliberate about your choice to walk on the narrow road because there are few who find it. Although we are seeing the great falling away unfold before our very eyes, don't allow it to happen to you. Hold on to your faith and hold on to sound doctrines. Hold on to your Bible. You should not allow your faith to stand on the integrity of anyone because they can fall too. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says we should always look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Foundationally, it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is a person, the person, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for what you did for us on the cross. Thank you so much, Jesus.